So I'm very happy to introduce Renata Fruchter. Uh, she's going to talk about a project that has been part of her remote team collaboration activities in the project-based learning laboratory, which she's a uh, founder of. And uh, she has looked at, she has, with direct experience, worked with teams that are around the world and uh, can tell you firsthand that remote collaborations mean you, means you can get jet lag without even leaving home. Uh, Renata's going to talk about Team Nudges. Renata? Thank you, Marta. Team Nudge. So what feedback nudge will significantly improve your performance? This is an ongoing research project uh, that is sponsored by the Binational Savvy Program, NSF, Tekes in Finland, TDIX, and Konica Minota, and engages some of my wonderful research students. Where are you? Maria, Flavia, Tony, Tonda, please stand up for a moment so people know who you are and they can come and talk with you because they are actually doing the hard work. And so let's start with a quiz. Do you know your and your team's workload? Your space and technology infrastructure? Your potential engagement? How often does your workload, your workplace location and available technology change? Once a day, once a week, or every 10 minutes, if you are mobile. So our research effort is focusing on uncovering hidden cognitive demands of global learners and knowledge workers as they experience five of the typical discontinuities and challenges working across disciplines and departments using collaboration technology infrastructures which need to be aligned and coordinated, coordinating their task interdependencies across time and space, and last but not least, the hardest, working in multicultural teams. So yes, it's about people, and the people are the core asset in every institution and corporation. So strategic decisions that you make in designing your operating and maintaining your facilities, designing your workplace and space, and choosing technology infrastructures to support these people and their well-being is core to your business. And these are numbers from an interesting study done by Basti Associates. But for us in our research group, well-being is more than wellness, more than health, satisfaction, collaboration, productivity, engagement, creativity. So we focus on questions such as how, is, how, how do you manage choice? How is transparency supported? And how is feedback provided? So if you want more, talk to Flavia. Another key emergent driver is um, represented by biometric and environmental consumer electronic technologies that allow us to revisit the question and the opportunity that points to the fact that we are wired for feedback. So once we have that feedback, that really compels us to uh, act and to be in control and to self-regulate. But wait a minute, uh, Einstein was reminding us that not everything that you count counts and not everything that you would like to count can be counted. So for us, the big question is what should we measure? And why should we measure it? And we believe that data is no good if we cannot improve people's well-being. 
In our particular research project, we have decided to focus on globally distributed project meetings because we all dial in and out of teleconferences, web conferences, and run from meeting room to meeting room. And we all know that when we are co-located, we can easily detect and assess the local conditions and the degrees of engagement that our team members uh, kind of indicate implicitly. For instance, body posture. However, when we go back to our geographically distributed offices and our local conditions change and our degrees of engagement vary, all this becomes invisible. And one of our key questions is how can we make all these invisible indicators visible through feedback nudges. More specifically, our goal is to identify and detect attention of our global partners that can indicate the intention of engagement. And we already heard in the video about different cultures looking at feedback and interaction and engagement in very different ways. So you may have an intention, but because you come from a high context culture, Asian culture, your intention is always going to be hidden and very often forgotten. So if we detect that intention before engagement, we can really foster productive collaborative activities that eventually lead to well-being. For instance, let's give back time to people and have more effective meetings. So in support of this goal, we developed the six steps to engagement framework and you saw Leonard, one of my students who worked uh, with me on this uh, project, and the first step is, I know where I am. This becomes transparent to you. So, and your local conditions are transparent to me. So I know where you are. With that, eventually we know where we are. So we can take the next step and we know where we want to go in terms of choices that we make of places, technologies, and work practices. And because our work environment is constantly changing, we need to work with these constraints and make decisions where we can go versus where we want to go. And then make explicit commitments to make a move. And these are feedback nudges towards mutual understanding and engagement at individual and team level. It is also an iterative process because our conditions constantly change as we move from co-located to distributed to multi-locational and mobile work. To support this, we use our BBI framework, Bricks, Bits and Interaction, to actually manage change and support transparency as people make explicit choices where they work in terms of the physical environment, what communication channels they use in terms of the virtual environment, and what social interactions, work practices, and processes they match to the bricks and the bits. So we deploy this in a real test bed, our global teamwork program that I've been running for the last two decades that engages university and industry partners worldwide and immerses cross-disciplinary globally distributed student teams in virtual design and construction projects over four and a half months. What you see here is a typical team in our program. It was Flavia's team. They had participants from seven countries from US, Mexico, Poland, Sweden, China, Korea, and New Zealand in five disciplines distributed over three time zones using very diverse collaboration environments, anything from 
web conferencing to their virtual collaboration neighborhood. And by the way, these clocks actually indicate the real weekly project meeting time. 9 p.m. California, midnight East Coast US, 6 a.m. Central Europe time. And so to support our study, we uh, use, integrate, and uh, correlate data from three types of resources coming from qualitative and quantitative instruments indicating potential engagement, indicated self-reported perceived engagement, and measured engagement coming from sensor-based technology fusion. And so here we are at the quantified self, and I know where I am. Step one in the six steps to engagement. And we have instrumented our participants in the global teamwork with a variety of sensors. And as new sensors come to the market, we are uh, having uh, plans to integrate them. Anything from sleep to heart rate variability to brain waves that indicates attention and engagement to cognitive tests before and after the meetings to detect vigilance and fatigue, to activity diary and uh, Kinect sensors uh, that uh, have been used in one of our media and Konica Minota sponsored project to develop Earring, a cloud uh, application and service that detects and identifies and provides feedback regarding degrees of engagement, moving us from I know where I am, the quantified self, to we know where we are. And we like to say that we are moving now in our research from the quantified self to the quantified we, which is a contribution to the field. Uh, in this uh, particular case, you see uh, and, and by the way, you can see that on your mobile phone. Uh, one of the participants actually is disengaged and goes through a transformation from disengagement to listening mode to full engagement. And so every participant can see the state and the aggregate of the team, which is also detected by our uh, my, uh, brainwave uh, tool and sensor uh, where, uh, I, and I love Byron's comment because if you look uh, carefully, we are looking at the second level. So this is our time frame and we can detect the moments when we see collaborative engagement uh, and, and feedback, the blue uh, graph is meditation, the green is attention, and when they are high and overlapping, you are in high engagement, close to flow mode. And in addition to that, lately uh, with uh, Tonga, we have been using uh, machine learning algorithms to uh, develop methods to um, understand and detect three states and represent at the individual and team level a brain map. And this is kind of a snapshot of 10 minutes of a meeting. So you start to have the portrait of your meeting and start to uh, mine for patterns and behaviors. One of the latest exciting uh, preliminary results is based on data analysis from the cognitive test that uh, is um, uh, um, done by the students before and after their meeting. And uh, Maria has been hammering on, on that data right uh, in the back. Uh, and we have identified a very interesting phenomenon that we have coined the afterglow engagement. Very interesting because uh, some team members 
in some of their weekly project meetings that are uh, held uh, very late at night, from 9 to midnight, uh, actually show high engagement at the end of their meeting, right? You come after a whole day of work, uh, lots of meetings, classwork, homework, and you have yet another two and a half hour meeting, and by the end of the meeting, your performance is higher than before the meeting, when you enter the meeting tired 9 p.m. So, uh, reaction time is faster and hit rate is higher. A and so, first Maria came and said something is wrong with the data and we love to start to detect what we don't expect, what we don't know. So now we are uh, in a very deep dive of data analysis taking a multi-method approach to actually analyze the video recordings. So doing video protocol analysis, which we call ground truth, to look at the uh, media, the channels, the activities, and the interactions that actually lead to such afterglow behavior patterns and conditions, correlating that, so VPA video protocol analysis, correlating that with sensor data from uh, the brain waves, from your body motion, from Kinect, uh, and heart rate variability, as well as a qualitative data from self-reported uh, surveys. So with that, I uh, close with an invitation, especially to our uh, media X industry partners to consider engaging in our uh, project pilot test bed. We would love to have some industry uh, pilots looking at global knowledge workers, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you.